Well, hello there, folks. My name is General DBA, Defense Base Act, that is. And my job is simple. I'm here to protect and serve all civilian employees working on United States government contracts overseas in international countries in the event that they're injured on the job. Now, while today I'm celebrating over 70 years of successfully protecting injured workers, it hasn't always been this way. And that is how I, the Defense Base Act, was born. So let me tell you a little about my story. This is how it goes. You see, it all started back in 1917 when a guy named Jensen was working on the New York City docks and, well, basically, he fell off a boat. And the United States Supreme Court in Southern Pacific versus Jensen determined that federal government, not the New York State Workers' Compensation System, had jurisdiction over persons injured in navigable waters of the United States. Essentially, your job was to load cargo onto a ship and you were injured on the land, you got state compensation benefits. While if you got injured on the boat, you sued for maritime benefits. But since Mr. Jensen fell into the water and he was not on land nor on board the vessel, he was denied any benefits because there was no law to protect him. <laughs> In 1927, the United States Congress recognized this problem and subsequently passed the Longshore and Harbor Workers' Compensation Act, a federal workers' compensation program designed to protect and cover these workers. And then came World War II. And in 1941, Congress amended the Longshore Act by providing Longshore workers' compensation coverage and benefits for overseas and military public works contractors. And that's when I, the Defense Base Act, was born. Airborne, that is. Hoorah! The Defense Base Act defines civilian contractors, and this includes all workers, even from foreign countries working on U.S. government contracts, and stated that if the contractor or worker got injured, they'd be entitled to medical care for all their injuries. Now the injured worker hmm. is entitled to pick his free choice physician and is entitled to medical care for both physical and psychological injuries. And if the claimant is told by his free choice doctor that he must take some time off from work, well, he or she is entitled to be paid his lost wages while he recovers. And during recovery, if the doctor tells the claimant he's not yet fully recovered but can work on a light duty or restricted basis, the claimant can and should look for work within the doctor's restrictions. And if the job pays less than the claimant's previous earnings, don't you worry, there's a compensation strategy in place for that, too. And when the doc determines that the injured worker has finally reached what is known as Maximum Medical Improvement, or MMI for short, well, the claimant can go back to work. However, if at MMI the injured worker cannot earn as much as he or she earned before they got hurt, then the claimant may be entitled to additional compensation. Yes, siree! This benefit is called permanent partial disability and may be paid to the injured worker for the rest of their life. Yep, compensation for the rest of their life. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the Defense Base Act and see if you'd qualify for coverage, then here's what you can do to better educate yourself. Visit the law firm of Barnett & Lerner at www.injuredoverseas.com for more information on your rights as civilian employees of the U.S. government. And stay tuned, because I'll be back soon with some more great information for you. So y'all come back now, you hear?